You know, I'm so thankful to be back here and see so many familiar faces. But I just want you to know that today you're going to get a revelation. But a revelation is not a revelation until somebody receives it. So when God brings an inspired word from heaven to earth, then somebody gets a hold of it. Then it becomes illuminated. That you know that this word that was brought forth this morning was for you from heaven. And when you begin to apply it to your life, victory is yours. The reason that we're destroyed is because we don't really understand the word of God. If we did, we'd be living a whole lot different. Because I found out, I've served the Lord for 60 years. And I found out a long time ago that we, we usually are in three categories. We're workers. We are warriors and worshipers. You know, you don't have to be a worshiper to be a worker. You don't have to be a worshiper, you know, to be a warrior. But if you are a worshiper, you are a worker and a warrior. That is a given. So this, today and tonight, and I'll be ministering tonight, and I know that your life is never going to be the same because you're going to get a word from heaven today. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's give the Lord the biggest ovation of the whole morning. You, you guys are Gestapo. Now look, now look let's sit. can we set a couple of rules? Now everybody sit down. Can we set a couple of rules? Talk to me now. I ain't gonna do a thing if you sit there like bumps on the log, all right? I say, can we establish some rules? Okay. It's not a misprint when the Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. It's not some of, not the ones that like you, right? It says, clap your hands, all of you people, and what? Shout! Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Now be real careful. Today will change your life if you'll tune in with me. Right? First of all, when you play in, in how many of y'all believe that, that Satan is smart? If you don't, you don't know the word. The word said he was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So if he was in charge of the atmosphere of heaven, what do you think he tries to do on earth? I didn't hear you. What do you think he tries to do on earth? He does everything in his power to establish an atmosphere for your defeat. Hello? I'm a pilot, I have about 14,000 hours in airplanes. The reason I have so much time is I flew a lot of slow airplanes. I never knew that you could really get so high you could get above storms like most Christians. I thought you'd just fly through them and fasten your seatbelt. And then I discovered that you really could get above storms. There's so many Christians that live their life just barely above the ground. And the most dangerous place to fly is low. Because you hit buildings, you hit trees, you for sure hit mountains. The first airplanes I ever flew, well, I couldn't get above 12,000, so when I went to California, I'd have to find the passes. If you don't find a pass, then you hit a mountain and it's not a good day. But there are just jillions, to use a loose term, of Christians that live no higher than the world, have no more victory than the world, die with the same diseases the world dies with, have the same depression that the world has, take the same pills to try to get them out of depression. When the word clearly shows us that we can walk above depression, we can walk above fear, we can walk above every kind of anxiety attack that this world has to offer. That's the bottom line. Now, let, let me just talk to you for a minute. When you play, instead of playing chords or changes, paint a picture of what I say. How's that? Okay? If I said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, what would you play? Right? It'd be peaceful, wouldn't it? Right? The Lord is my shepherd I share not one 
and he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You got it. He restores my soul. And he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name say <laughs> and surely I will dwell yes oh surely I will dwell in the house, in the house of the Lord, whoa, for forever. See, something happens when you, now just stop for a minute. If I say, don't play, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Right? Now, if you play behind me when I say that, and you paint that picture, watch what happens. Do it right now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still and restful waters, yes. And he anoints my head with oil. You got it, man. You see, very little, very little is known about sound. We use sound sort of like we're totally ignorant of its ability to penetrate the hearts of men and women. See. Music is a tri-dimensional spiritual force built exactly like God is built. Melody, harmony, and rhythm, just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And when you take the drums and put them way over there and the guitar over here, they can never come together. It's sort of like if the devil can create a division, as in a denomination, he has just isolated believers from other believers. When you, but when you understand the law, see, because sound, see, God did not create music. Do you realize that? I said, God did not create music. Now, if you're religious, you'll go, well, that white boy's crazy. No, he's not. He knows the word. Music has been around as long as God has been around. If God created it, wouldn't it be in the Bible that he created it? Huh? Come on, talk to me. We'll have a lot more fun if you will. Because I can play all the high notes in the world, in the universe, and sing the greatest songs. But if you don't get it, you just you might as well have watched TV. Because churches are full of people that go to church and they sing a couple of songs, not really understanding any of the laws, right? and they walk out unchanged. If you go to church and you don't get changed, you've not encountered Jesus. But if you do encounter him, no one stays the same when they encounter him. That's the whole deal, see? And when God created praise, see praise has been around before the foundation of the earth. Do you realize that? Praise is not something you just do at church. It's sort of like going to boot camp and learn how to shoot a gun and being in the police force and then leaving your gun at home when you go on the, on the beat, right? Christians all are famous for going to church and singing a song that's anointed because here's the law. God cannot stay away from sounds made in his honor. No matter if the song is great or the song is not so great, God will always show up. God doesn't need an opera singer he doesn't need a legendary voice for him to show up. He simply needs a heart that's inclined in his direction. And when you understand that, the whole game changes. The whole game changes. And see, when you realize, 
It's like this. If you don't remember anything else, now paint pictures. As the air is that you breathe supports human life. So everybody hold your breath for a minute. Ready? Hold your breath. Don't just look at me. Hold your breath. After a minute, your body's going, what's the matter with you, boy? <laughs> right? It says, I need something. That's Doesn't right. it? Right? Amen. See, as the air is that you breathe supports human life, so is sound to spiritual forces. Depression cannot stay, even when this brother plays. Right? Why? Because there's a law called the law of contact. When he presses a key, right? Here, here, here's the law. When David played the harp before King Saul, remember the story, right? And it says the, the evil spirit departed. It didn't say that, that David played so great that Saul clapped his hands and was all of a sudden happy. No. What it was, it says that as David began to play, the evil spirit departed. The reason the evil spirit departed, it did not have life support. Amen. That's the thing. Christians are famous, no matter how great the word is that you give, if you do not take control over what you allow in the atmosphere of your world, you will be unchanged and you will live life just like the world lives. That's the law. But when you understand the law, see, when David walked in, you remember the story? When David walked in, it says that Saul was sufficiently ticked off that he threw a javelin at David. Right? You remember that story? Right? If I'd have been David, I'd have probably split. He said, dude, keep your own bad self, Mr. King. Right? But he didn't. He sat down and he began to play. And as he began to play, God, who cannot stay away from sounds made in his honor, right? David began to establish a new paradigm in Saul's domain. It was not a paradigm that supported depression and fear and turmoil. And that same law is exactly the same today. It has no, it has not changed at all, okay? If you deal with depression, you don't need to take a pill that will heal you, because pills don't. They make you want more pills. The reason the drug world, I've probably spent at least $600,000 to get high, so I know about drugs, okay? The reason the drug world continues to escalate is no matter what kind of drug you take, you'll always want another drug because before long, it won't take you as high as you thought it was taking you before. That's the law, see? But God is called the Most High. It's not a misprint. He is the Most High. And His presence will take you out of depression. His presence will take you out of fear. His presence will take you out of the turmoil that this world has to offer. Y no se importa la manera en que le dices, ¿sabes? The Spirit of God is the same in any language. He's the same in any genre of music. Okay? He can ride, he can ride any kind of music. Don't get religious. Usually people that don't like the new kinds of music are just because they're old. That's the bottom line. So if and okay, if how many of y'all are Christians? Put your hand up. Everybody vote. If you're not a Christian, raise your hand. It's all right. How many of y'all believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God? Put your hand up. All right. How many of y'all like jazz? How many don't like it? Come on, vote. How many like country music? How many can't stand that stuff? How many like rock and roll? How many definitely don't like that? How many like it loud? How many can't stand it loud? All right, you understand? You understand? You understand? Just because God made you a believer, you're a believer, doesn't mean he changes your tastes. He changes the way you live your life. That's the bottom line, okay? So now, when we establish that paradigm, it's this. Do you think that God wants you to win in your life? Do you believe that? Thank God you're here, sister, because you're talking to me. 
How many of y'all believe that God wants you to win? Amen. What about you people over here? You're not saying nothing. How many of y'all believe God wants you to win? Amen. I said, how many of y'all believe God wants you to win? Is it not better to win than to lose? Isn't it? Right? You know, have you ever noticed? The Bible says dance before the Lord, right? How many of y'all believe that's true? Come on, talk to me. How many of y'all believe it's scriptural to dance before the Lord, right? Well, do you know it's not, I've never heard of a loser's dance. Huh? I've never heard of losers dance. They, when you win a game, you have a dance usually, right? But if you lose, they don't have losers dances. Why? Because dancing isn't fun. I mean, losing isn't fun. And dancing always makes you smile. Even if you dance like a white boy, right? You dance, right? The Bible said, you know what a dance is? What's a clap? What is that? It's a penetration into the atmosphere. You know, religious people will hate it when anybody waves a flag or they dance in church. There's, there are churches that if you danced in, they would kick you out, right? But the Bible says, dance before the Lord all the earth. It's, right? It does say to serve him with gladness. That's not a misprint. If you're not having more fun serving God than the world has getting high, you're doing it wrong. Right? We should have, the joy of the Lord is what? I can't hear you. What is the joy of the Lord? Okay, turn it around. No joy, no strength. Right? If you have no joy in your life, that just means you don't got no power, man. Right? Do you believe God wants you to have strength? Do you believe he wants you to have joy? All right. Let's just believe that today God will use this time to impact us all. Father, we agree in the name of the Lord Jesus that you use today and tonight to cause a greater awareness, to cause a greater sound from your people of victory in the name of Jesus. And we believe for it right now. There's a law called the law of corresponding action. Any action, David, stand up. Any action, and he's bigger than me, but if I push him, right? If I push him, he's gonna push me back, push me back, come on, see? See, right, that's the law. That's the law of corresponding action, sit down. That's the law of corresponding action. So, for every action that you make in God's direction causes a reaction from heaven. The word says, bless ye the Lord, ye his angels who excel in strength, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Is that right? Okay, so when you, can I use you as an example? Stand up, brother. Shout. Glory! Okay, now when that, when that sound happens, Amen. when that sound happens, it causes, first of all, it causes a change in the atmosphere where that sound can be heard. It's what we call the dominion principle. God gave Adam dominion over the earth to rule it and to subdue it. So when you shout, see the reason you shout is it causes, first of all, the smaller sounds you make, the closer to death you are. Dead men don't shout. Ah! When I shout, you'll hear it. I shout in the middle of a horn. See, I, I put that sound in the middle of a piece of plumbing, right? Yes. But when, when you shout, and you shout with an understanding of why you shout. I mean, just to shoot a gun in the air is not gonna do anything. But if you understand that a shout is a weapon, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty unto God to the pulling down of strongholds. If there's a stronghold in your life and you believe that the word of God is true in your life and you begin to shout because you consider the word above your certain situation, right? When you begin to shout that way, it activates heaven's power. And it causes heaven to begin to operate as if you had already won. Thank you, brother, Amen. sit down. Amen. You remember when Joshua, y'all know that story, right? You remember the story? Y'all aren't talking to me, you're just sort of looking at me like I'm. Everybody turn over to Joshua. I was reading it this morning. I wasn't gonna go here. But I just thought I would. Joshua 6. You got Bibles? iPads, phones, something with the word on it, in it. 
Don't stop, man. Do you understand? But yeah, let, let's be real. Most, 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 most churches don't even have a clue why there is a piano in there. They don't. And they use it thinking, well, we'll play this song and that song. It's not there for that reason. That's part of it. But it's to establish an atmosphere. You know, when Solomon built the temple, there was platoons of musicians that played 24-7. They played continually. You know why they played? Probably Solomon didn't even know. But God knew, and knew the reason, and it was to control the atmosphere of the temple so that God's presence was continually in the temple because he can't stay away from sounds made in his honor. That's the law, see? When you begin, even if you can't sing, if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, and you begin to say, You know what happens? Heaven begins to hear that sound and it ushers in the presence of the Lord. And when you realize that, you no longer become a spectator. The worst thing Hollywood has done for the church is caused the church to be spectators in services because they don't understand. If you're a spectator, you'll just simply look at what I do or what Darren does. And you'll judge it looking for a better show. And if you don't like the show here, you'll find some other church and try to get a better show there. That's the way that thing happens. And so people live their life vicariously through what Hollywood has fed us. We live our life watching some show, right? And we allow that mentality to come into the church. And so we simply watch what kind of a show they're going to put on. New lights, new camera, new action, right? And it's not about that. It's about you and I coming into the presence of the Lord because in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. Honor and majesty are found in his presence. Strength and joy are found in his sanctuary, right? In his tabernacle. How many of you are the tabernacle of God? I can't hear you. Are you the tabernacle of God? Then when you are the tabernacle of God, you're not dead. Amen? You with me? Okay. Joshua 6. God begins to give Joshua rules. Now watch. Just stand by. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. Chapter 6, verse 3 and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Let me just tell you something, I, I have to stop here. The one instrument that Satan can't play is the brass and the reason is it's designed to introduce royalty. See, God gave Lucifer the ability to make rhythm. He gave him the ability to make monophonic instruments, like the trumpet is a monophonic instrument, or the ability to pl play one note at a time. That's a monophonic sound, okay? The Bible says he created in him timbrels, which are the beginnings of all rhythm, all pulses, and he created in him the pipes, which were the bassoon, the oboe, the clarinet, the flute, the saxophone, they're reed instruments, right? And then he created, and according to Isaiah, he created the vials, which you quit playing one notes. Now you now play now play changes. Okay, those are just play one triad. Okay. Da da da. To be able to play that at the same time is what we call polyphony, okay? That's what Lucifer was given by God to make chords, all right? But the one thing missing was he couldn't play the brass. There's no place in the Bible that talks about his ability to play the brass. And I asked the Lord why. He said, because that's the benchmark of royalty. You'll never see a president introduced without a brass band. The king of kings will not be introduced by a kazoo. He'll be introduced by a trumpet. 
The trumpet is the heavenly designed instrument that we now see on earth. The trumpet and the harp are the heavenly designed instruments, right? So when you see that, when, the, when God gave Joshua the commandment, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And he didn't say, then you can go kick you know what and take names. He didn't say that. He said, then the walls will fall flat. And when you read about it, what most people don't understand is anytime you hear the ram's horn or the trumpet in the word of God, it's always to announce God. <laughs> That's the deal, right? Right? So he tells Joshua, if you get, a, get a load of this. Now, don't play for just a minute. March around the city and blow the ram's horn. So the priest blew the ram's horn. Oh, man. The priest blew the ram's horn. The priest blew the ram's horn. The priest blew the ram's horn. And so all the way around the city, the priests were blowing the ram's horn and they were saying, we're just introducing God. We're announcing he's coming, right? But it wasn't the, the normal people playing the ram's horn. It was the priests. But when Jesus came and conquered death, hell, and the grave, he raised you to be a king and a priest. We are kings and priests unto God. So when we make that sound, <laughs> we have the legal license to sound the sound that introduces God in our battle. We have the legal license. And when you understand that, the whole thing changes. You see what I'm saying? So then what he said, here's another law, just because I'm on a roll for a minute, and then I'll play. Here's the law. Opposite sounds cancel. I can take a rock and roll sound system and fired 130, 35 dB, which is medium stun. There's all kinds of things. And it's like, the, I never heard play it soft until I got to church. The world does not play it soft. Uh -uh. I'm gonna say again, the world doesn't play it soft. And if you get talked into being soft, it just means you're a loser. That's what it means. Soft sounds are the accompanying sound of defeat. Just go to any ball game. You're on one side, they're radical. Why? Because they're winning. On the other side, you might hear a sound, but it's usually booing the referee, <laughs> booing a play. Right. Is that not right? Come on, talk to me, right? So when you understand that law, opposite sounds cancel. So I could be running 130 to be, if I had, it, literally if I had a sound system set here and at the back of this place, wherever it is, I set up another sound system, equally powerful, and I turned the signal 180 degrees out of phase, the sound would die where that signal began. I've done it with noise audiences, noise ordinances, where they would stop the show if you busted the noise ordinance, right? So we just set up sound system in the back and we put it out of phase, or we'd invert it, right? Make it opposite, right? That's the law. So here's the thing. You can't shout, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for my victory, whatever that victory is, and then turn around and tell your husband, your wife, your friend, I don't think I can pay my bills this week because I don't have any money to do it. You just canceled God's ability to operate in your life. You cannot do it. You understand? You cannot do it. It's a law, right? But now watch this. Here's where I got, I got, when I first read this, I got really excited. Because he said in verse 10, I'm, well, I'll just, let me, let me go. Eight, verse 8. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, passed on before the Lord. Now how, why would it say they're passing on before the Lord? Huh? Y'all are too quiet. Come on. Why would they say they passed on before the Lord? You know why? Because he can't stay away from sounds made in his honor. They're making sounds in his honor, so they're passing before the Lord. That's the law. 
When you make sounds, if you want God to show up in your battle, start making sounds in his honor and he always shows up and he always strengthens you. He always gives you courage when you don't have it. Are y'all getting this? Now watch. They passed before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Oh man, if you, just get, if you just get half of this, it'll rock your world. The whole place where God lived, you know that verse that says God inhabits the praises of his people? That literally means God charges the air with his energy and power. God inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits the praises. He rides the praises. He inhabits, he charges the air with his energy and power where the praises are. Now let's just go, let's go one place else. Uh, in the Amplified, I think it's, turn, just hold your place there and turn to Psalms 22. I don't hear any pages, y'all, I must be on iPhone. <laughs> Psalms 22. Darlene, this is what you and I were talking about. Psalms 22, 3, this is the King James. But thou art holy, say it with me, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Now, if you be Christ, how many of you are Christ? Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise, right? Is that right? So when you and I are believers, we have been grafted in. You are Jewish by the grafting law. You become a joint heir with Jesus, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay, so, but if you read it in the, in the Amplified Bible, let me read you the Amplified Bible. It says, but you are holy, O you who dwell in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. I want to just take a minute. You are holy, you that dwell in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. Here's the law. Praise is the clapping of the hands, the making a joyful noise. Praise is identical to the sound of victory. That's what praise is. It can be called the highest level of faith in the earth because when you praise God, you praise him according to his excellent greatness or in the same measure and manner that he's great. That's why polite applause is illegal praise cost you nothing, cost you nothing. David said, how can I offer God that which costs me nothing? If God has redeemed you, if God has healed you, if God has set you feet on a high place, if he's filled you with his power, then you cannot but make a sound that is the same as his greatness. That's why it's not, it's illegal to sit there like bumps on the log in a place where we and we call, this is the place where God is worshiped. This is the place where we praise him. This is the place where we lift our voice. This is the place where we rejoice. This is the place where victory is born in our hearts. This is the place where sickness has to bow its knee, where lack has to bow its knee. This is the place where God rises up. Let God arise and his enemies be shattered. Let God's power be released. That's what this is all about. And when you see that, the whole thing changes. Your world changes. Your life changes. Your battles change. You, you absolutely arrive to a new place. Have you ever known, you guys that play sports, you guys that play sports, you know you can see in a game where the momentum shifts. You know what I'm talking about? Mo How many of y'all know momentum is a real thing? You can see all of a sudden, something begins to click. Something begins to change. And the team begins to operate in a new genre. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like nothing they do can miss because that's a momentum shift, see? In any battle, if the momentum doesn't shift to your benefit, you have not encountered God because he's never lost. He's never been defeated. And he will not start his defeat
process with your defeat. That's the whole deal. And when you see it, oh, man. Now go back to Joshua for a minute. But I didn't finish. There's an element, any sound that is made in the honor of God, please hear me, creates a holy place. Now, when you realize God inhabits the praises of his people, right? Okay, that means he lives in the sound because praise is not praise unless it's sounded. Praise is not mental assent. Praise is not, well, I agree. The power of agreement is a real thing. But until it was sounded, God could have thought, let there be light, and there would never have been light. It was never light until it was sounded before it became in existence. That's the law. Your victory cannot be born until it's sounded. That's the law. It cannot be born unless it's sounded. But the beautiful thing about it, when you read that verse, but thou art holy, thou that inhabits the praises of Israel, or you could say the praises of my people, and then you listen to it articulately described, but you are, you are holy, and you, let me read it so I don't misquote it. The holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. I've got to read it one more time to make sure I say it right. 22. But you, Lord, are holy. O oh, you who dwell. If you dwell, what do you do? I can't hear you. What do you do? You live in it, right? I dwell at this address, right? right? That means I live there. So God is saying, I live in the holy place where the praises of my people are offered. Now, would that not change your battle? If God be for us, who can be against us? But God has to show up. Amen. There's a lot of people who believe, well, God, God, you know, God, God died for my sins, but they still walk in their sins. Yeah. Or God, he's already made a way to provide for me. But then, if he's not providing, you can't blame God, because he's never lied. You have to blame the modus operandi. Like I played the trumpet. I played, I, I just turned 70. I played since I was 11, so you can do the math, right? And I took from the best teachers in the world and called by many one of the greats, if not the greatest, right? But I knew I hit a wall. And I knew that there were things that I had to do differently because if you operate in a flawed understanding, even if it's just a little bit flawed, you can never attend to the very highs unless you operate in 100% of the law. And so one day I had, about 20 years ago, I had to say, I'm breaking everything down and I'm going to relearn. And for a little while I sounded like a beginner. But I knew that if I could just get to that position, that's where I play. It's like for me to play a low note is no, for me to play a high note is no more difficult than a low note. It's like a keyboard, right? But I have to be in the right position. In order for you to attain the things that God has for you in the greatest dimension, you have to be in the right position. And when you are in the right position, that means nothing is impossible for you. Amen. And it changes the way it all works, right? Amen. Now I'll quit and then I'll play. Turn over back to Joshua. So I've got to get this one. Because if you get this one, it'll rock your world. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> I love it. Joshua says, just turn to verse 10 so I won't take a long time. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Amen. Then shall you shout. Now I guarantee you Joshua didn't have a clue why God instructed him to say that. But we know by now that the children of Israel could murmur and complain with the best of them. 
right? Is that not right? So God knew that if they didn't shut their mouth in the normal course of the day, they would cause him to be unable to be victorious. Now just think about it. Just think about it. So they're marching around the city and they blow the ram's horn and they're announcing God. And then he tells them, shut up. When you go back to your tents, don't talk. Corinthians says, there are so many voices or sounds in the world and none of them is without signification. Don't ever think that every word that comes out of your mouth isn't prophesying your future, because it is. Don't ever think that you can just, you know, come to church and praise God for 15 minutes and go out and just say whatever you want to say and think you're going to win, you're going to lose. Because the word is no respecter of persons. Now, Lord, <laughs> let this sink in, please. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, the end of that, you still got your verse, you still got your thing in there in Joshua. Mm -hmm. What happened when they, just read the, read the verse when, when, when they shouted. What happened to the wall? I'm putting him on the spot. Which verse is that? I'll show you. And when, and it says, if I think it's verse, I got it. you got it? Read it. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the- A what shout? A what shout? A great shout. Okay. Right. The wall fell down flat. So Say it one more time. The wall fell down flat. What did it say next? So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. If you read the, the science behind it, the walls of Jericho were the highest walls known to man at that time. And they fell flat. And there was no sign. Nobody saw a bunch of angels knocking them down. That doesn't mean they didn't. But it does mean if God upholds the world by the word of his power... He can sure flatten your walls. If God can uphold the worlds by the word of his power, he can flatten every impossibility in your life. And it's not because of your power, it's because of, of your obedience to him and believing unequivocally that this word is true. That means it's above what the doctors say. It's above fact. The fact may be you're broke. But the, the truth is God has supplied all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. The fact may be that you got this disease or that disease, but the truth is he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes you were healed. So that means that word trumps everything else. And if you choose to believe the word and you begin to sound in unison with the word, that's when Oh, man, that's when it all begins. You know, we should really be, if we are the chosen generation, the royal priesthood, the holy nation, we should be the ones that the world looks at with dismay to say, how is this? That these are simple people, but they prosper. They're healthy. Their marriages are on fire. They, they, they are eating the good of the land. See, we are not the ones that are supposed to be hiding behind closed church walls. We are the ones that take the church to the street. Hallelujah. Well, I love you, Lord. Just... Now, Darren, how much time do I have? It's 12 o'clock right now. I, I knew that I had to just obey the Lord before I did anything. You know, if I just played, you know, it, so what? You've heard great players before, and I'm not really that great. I just am a beginner, but hallelujah. Ready? <laughs>
6 o'clock Wednesday night <laughs> and not run out of songs. And what I enjoy the most is I really never have clue one what God will have me do. And so it's a great adventure. But Darren asked me if I would play a song, so if I don't do it now, I might forget. And he might not ever invite me back. <laughs> but what he doesn't know is I played for several years with a guy by the name of Joe Cocker. And so my voice sounded a little radical. And uh, when I recorded this song, it was, it's out of John 17 where Jesus prayed, Father, let them be one, even as you and I are one. I in them and you in me, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. And I was in a, it was in a session, and uh, this is a true story. In, in my sessions in recording, I don't really usually let anybody in that's not involved in it. Somewhere or the other, this guy found his way in, and he's sitting like in front of the control room looking out at the studio where we were cutting. And, and I didn't know who he was. I figured he was one of my, one of the players' friends. So I never said anything to him. I just assumed he was okay. And as I began to sing this song, <clears throat> I'm not sure because we ministered in a prison the last three days. So my, because I don't, re I really only have one speed. I just go pedal to the metal. And, and uh, so my voice is maybe a little hoarse, but it is that way. But I'll never forget, I started to sing this song and uh, I was aware that my voice was changing. That's, and you got to understand, I've been singing. I really never started singing until I was 21 because my lips were getting tired and I said, I got to do something else. <laughs> it's a true story. And I ended up starting to sing the song and I'm telling you something happened to my voice. And I sang the, the song all the way through and I'm walking out toward the coffee place to get a cup of coffee and this guy comes out and he was about 6'8 and he had long white hair and all he said to me was, Phil, God has changed your voice, hasn't he? And I looked at him and I went, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess he did. And I went on just sort of, I blew it off. And when I got back, I tried to find the guy. He was gone and nobody knew who he was, where he came from. I think, I think it was an angel. Bind us together With your mind of unity Cause your word says we are brothers Let us be one, one Even as you and my father are one So the world can see you
see you risen No longer on a no rugged cross Lord, may your glory fill us Make us one Make us one Make us one Voice, let your will be done Make us one flame to proclaim
for you, my Lord, are holy and worthy to receive. You, my Lord, are worthy to receive all honor. receive revelation from you Lord how to live my life in greater victory and I will in Jesus name and now just tell him how much you love him
Lord, I just thank you for your presence in this place. We give you praise, Lord, that you ignite in every believer a sound of victory like has never been in them, a sound of praise like has never been heard in their homes and their cars. I pray, Lord, for a great manifestation of your presence in the life of every believer under the sound of my voice. And I give you the praise for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, can we give the Lord the biggest praise of the whole morning? Come on, a little bit louder. I can't hear you. A little bit louder. A little bit louder. You know, when I first, Darren, when I first, when I first heard you minister, I never heard you minister until I was uh, at uh, Solid Rock, and and I, I saw in you, hey brother, don't ever leave me when I'm here. You stay right there. You're too good to be sitting in the choir. But I really, I believe, Darren, that God's got a great calling in your life, and I believe you've not seen anything yet. Just don't be afraid to do the ridiculous. And don't ever get caught in the religious trappings of pastorship. Because you're a musician, you're an artist, you got a prophetic call in your life. And you're going to be used mightily in the earth to cause people to come into God's presence. It's the greatest calling in the world, brother. Greatest calling in the world. I love you. And I want to, I'm going to do one song because it's a, it's a great day for for me because God has done a great thing for me in putting a dynamite on a short fuse in my life. She's the greatest woman preacher I've ever heard in my life, full of Jesus. And we're going to have too much fun in the earth. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise. Well, maybe a little bit. But we have, I made, I can't take all the CDs I've made, it's not possible. You can go on fieldriscoll.com and download anything. But I brought some CDs. The one that started it all for me was I Exalt Thee. And man, this has been, this has been in so many countries I can't even think about it. And then there's a Darlene's favorite, and I don't know why particularly, but it's called Plugged In. And she, she, whenever I got, would get in the car with her, I think God, I told her God blinded her eyes, right? That's what really what happened. But, but she would be playing these, these songs. And I remember Billy Preston was a, a good friend of mine and we wrote several songs together. And one of them, I may do before I walk off of here, but I am, I'm, I'm including one here, it's called the Spirit of America, because I am concerned about our country, I think any one of us should be. But there are songs about, it's not Muhammad bless America, it's God bless America. And there's so much of God in the songs of our country. Like, you know, in America the Beautiful, the second verse which nobody sings much is, oh beautiful for heroes proved. You know that song? America the Beautiful, you know that? Don't give me that, man. Don't tell me you don't know that song. Go learn it tonight. It says, Oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life. We need mercy in our country. In the battle hymn of the Republic, you can't get much. Hallelujah means 10,000 praises to God. Glory, glory. Glory is the manifested praises of God. You can't get more of God in any two words in the English language. And then the second verse says, oh beautiful, oh, it says, uh, don't play now because I can't do it when you play, just a minute. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. Now you can play, I got it. With the glory in his bosom that what transfigures you and me, that means changes us. Transfigures mean to change your visage in, in, in view of all. And when, when Jesus was transformed, you remember on the, on the mount, right? His countenance shone like the light. That's in the song about our country. So I, 
I include that. And then I've, I've only done really one, because I've fought the, the whole teaching side of what God's called me to do, because I, I play music. And I thought it's beneath my dignity or above my dignity, depends on how you're looking at it. But I did a, I did a, a two CD thing called Heaven's Truth Revealed, which is the first CD is the force field of praise. Praise creates a force field around your life through which darkness cannot penetrate. That's the bottom line. And then worship is the currency of heaven. We know very little about worship. We talk about it, we look at it like an art form or a cultural experience, it's not. It's what controls the atmosphere of heaven. And when you understand that, no wonder Jesus said, my father's looking for true worshipers. Because when you worship him, here's what happens. When you worship God, what does that require? It requires sometimes you bow. In other words, you lose your dignity and your high-flying ways. And you give to God of your energy, your life energy, right, in worship. Don't buy the lie that worship is always soft because sometimes it's very loud. Worship then is a seed sown in God's direction, right? Come on, stay with me, right? And when you sow, you reap, isn't that right? Worship was not for God's benefit, it was for our benefit. Because it causes your eye to be single. And the word says when your eye is single, what? Your whole body is filled with light. So those are some things out there for you. But I think I'll close. Thanks, brother, for playing with me today. I hope I didn't make you too crazy. I hope I did. I hope I did. Come here. Bless the Lord with my whole heart. Play. I will show forth all his marvelous works. And I will be glad and rejoice in thee. Yes. I will sing praise to thy name, O Most High. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. I said y'all can do it a little bit louder than that. I'll never forget one time I was in some, you know. Yeah, you're on it today, man. Yeah. You got a great spirit, brother. You know, I was, I was at this place and they said, well, let's give the Lord the praise. And everybody clap like this. And God really spoke to me and said, tell them polite applause is illegal praise. That went over real well, didn't it? You got it. Psalms 48 says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. This is not great. That's 
it's not great grace. You know why it's not great? Because it didn't cost me anything. Right? When you clap your hands, it really is supposed to cost you something. David said, how can I offer to God that which cost me nothing? And the reason a lot of Christians don't get much from God is they don't give much of their life energy. Right? When I play, in order for it to equal... Whenever I play, I only think about one thing. I get the wonderful opportunity to announce God's presence. That's it. I don't think about notes. I don't really think, how can I do this? I purpose never to have a highest note that I can play because when I get there, I can never go higher. A lot of Christians live their life never knowing that they can live so much higher. If they just got a hold of the greater one inside of them. Hallelujah. So if I'm going to play and announce God, right? Now, when I do that, you can't do that in the natural without knowing it's going to cost you something. But every time I do that whether it's sing or shout dead people don't shout neither do dead Christians and I know where she's going tonight so I'll just set you, I'll just set it up here's the way the Bible says to praise him shout unto God with a voice of triumph right not a voice of defeat there's no such thing as a shout of defeat it's impossible Come on now, don't, y'all don't shout me now. There's no such thing as a shout of defeat. How many of y'all believe that God intends for you to win? Can anybody? I didn't hear you. How many of y'all believe that God intends for you to win? Why would Jesus have died a criminal's death so you could just live like a criminal? Right? Right? The message he preached all the time was the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the meek, to set at liberty them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Isn't that right? right. And I had never really seen this verse. I love the Amplified because God likes it loud. And I have this phobia about things that are soft. And I told him this morning, I'd never heard to play it soft until I got to church. Because in rock and roll, there's only one volume and it's 10. You, you get it as loud as you can get. In fact, the guys that used to do the Cocker tour for us did the Beatles tour, and the guy was a scientist. He said, you don't make an impact on the human psyche, to use a really strange word. You don't make an impact unless you're at least 125, 30 dB. And so we go into churches all the time. Hold my Bible there, brother, if you don't mind. And the pastor sounds like this. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord praise right now. You can't hear him because there are some people that have well-meaning. You know, if you, if you are older, usually you get stuck in what you used to like. But God is always going to do a new thing. The word says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. God, if you think God is stuck in Oldville, he's not. He's going to do a new thing. And if you... Just follow him and I just follow him. We'll get to do new things all the time. And it keeps you from getting bored, keeps you from getting, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? But I I saw this verse, Darlene and I were reading, and it just got me. In the Amplified, now, you know, if you speak King James, if you go, wherefore dost thou want us me to go, God will say over there, but he'll think you're weird because God doesn't talk that way. King James doesn't, speaking King James doesn't make you holy. The blood of Jesus makes you holy. Amen. But if you say, hey, God, what's happening? He'll say, yo, I am. Because he is. Don't get hung up on. Oh, well, it's all right. In the the King James, Psalms 48, verse 10 says, according to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. You know, there's a verse that says, praise him according to his excellent greatness. That really means praise him in the same measure and manner that he's great. And if you don't praise him that way, you're not praising him. Because praise, by definition, requires a maximum human energy. 
because you're praising the one who is the maximum energy in the universe. So you cannot, see the way God does business is in the law of fair exchange. That's why the lottery is wrong. That's why gambling is wrong because there's no fair exchange. See, Jesus was given to the earth by God as a fair exchange for the sins of all mankind. So when he died, he gave us the right to walk free from every power of sin, right? The law of praise demands that you give God the maximum sound. See, praise is not praise until it's sounded. You can't mentally praise God. You don't mentally think, well, I'm praising God. Just like me think I'm playing the trumpet. Unless the sound comes out, I ain't playing the trumpet. And really, when you think about it, I am not a trumpet player. I am a trumpet. That just amplifies the sound that's on the inside of me. See, I can get that horn, and you can hang it up. You can hang it up in a museum. It's a pretty horn, right? Hold my Bible again, brother. Thing. I'm sure glad you're here tonight. <laughs> See, this horn could be hung up in a museum. People would go, that's a pretty horn, right? But it wasn't created to be hung up in a museum. You were not created <laughs> to walk around carrying the burdens of the earth, carrying all your troubles and acting like you carried them. First of all, you give God a bad name because people think that that's the way you, it is when you serve God, right? You were created, the Bible says, and she's going to minister on it, you were created to praise the Lord. You were formed in the very beginning to show forth praise. That's what it is. But see, this horn never does what it was created to do until a sound comes out the end of that bell. It could be used in a sewer. It's just copper, right? But somebody crafted it and wove it. It's got all kinds of technology. This, this horn is bored and stroked like you do an engine, right? Right? But when it comes alive is when the sound of a trumpet is put into it. See? Right? Hold it. Still looks pretty. There's no sound. Mm -hmm. right. Really no sound. Mm -hmm. That see, praise, the Bible says stills the avenger. It means makes him stand at attention, mm -hmm. unable to move. Amen. So when you understand that, see, that's why. That sound is intended to still the avenger. When you shout, you have to shout with a revelation that it is intended to not just still the avenger, but to cause all of heaven's artillery to operate in your behalf. Because we, we use a technology today called nonlinear. I used to record up. I spent millions of dollars making records. And I've recorded 37 CDs for Jesus. But I learned this, that we used to record on magnetic tape, right? And then came digital tape. So we could, he could be playing a song in this thing, and we could put him in a totally other song and turn him around and change his tune and do everything because of nonlinear technology. Well, it's not 702 in heaven. It's 702 in Waco. So how could God restore what the canker worm destroyed unless he could move in and out of time? So you may look at your battle like you're being defeated. And it may look, have all the apparent reasons of defeat. It can look defeated. It can look impossible. There's no way you can win. But God is not bound to the dimension of time you and I live in. And so when you praise him, you enter the eternal, uh, you enter into eternity. You bypass the time of the day and you enter into the eternal dimension of God. The eternal dimension that heaven operates in. 
when the word says, bless ye his angels who excel in strength, hearkening unto the voice of his word, that means when angels hear a sound of praise, which is a declaration of your victory, that's what praise is. Praise is not really, there's only one mention in the word of God where praise is in heaven. It talks about praise ye him, ye dragons, ye creeping things, ye heavenly hosts, okay? Because praise is a dimension that God created in the earth for the victory of mankind, for the victory of believers. Praise does this. You praise him according to what he's done for you and you praise him according to what you know his word promises he will do. Those two things lock you into the dimension of not being able to walk defeated in this life, not being able to be put down in this life because when you begin to shout, you shout, it's like a gun. If I had a gun and I put blanks in it and I shot it, I mean, I shot it, and it made a loud sound, right? Wake up, everybody awake. And I shot it. You'd hear a loud sound, but it doesn't do any damage. Churches are full of people who sing a song. A song is praise. Great is our God. They sing great songs, and nobody gets anything but the evidence of that song. That song is this. Whenever you make a sound in God's honor, God always comes. He always comes. He always comes. Years ago, because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to sounds, I had missed so many notes I couldn't even count them all. And I was moaning the fact. And, and God really spoke to me. He said, son, I don't care how many notes you miss. He said, I can't stay away from sounds that are made in my honor. So it sets you free from thinking you have to be some kind of a great singer, some kind of a great trumpet player, some kind of a great whatever, keyboard player, guitar player. What God is looking for is a sound in his honor because you can't make a sound in his honor without engaging your heart. See, that's the whole thing. When you begin to lift up your voice, see at a ball game, you shout when you score. You clap your hands. What are those, everything praise is is what you do at a ball game if you're not a spectator. See, spectators don't get involved in it. They, don't, they just sit there and watch. But fans, they'll paint their faces. Guys with PhDs will take off their shirt in snowbound weather, right? Because it's legal to be radical when you are a fan. Really what a fan is is just fanatic. But when you become a fan of God, and you understand what Jesus did for us, and you begin to read in this word where it says, no weapon formed against me will prosper, and every tongue that rises against me in judgment I will condemn, when it says, yea, in all these things you're more than a conqueror, that means you're more than victorious, and you begin to believe that, right? Then you have bullets in your weapon of praise so that when you shout, it's a shout with a purpose. When you clap your hands, you're clapping your hands with a purpose. When you go to a ball game, you clap after the score, but we who call those things that be not as though they were, we clap before because you find yourself in the tables of this word and you begin to sound exactly like you're gonna sound. Stay with me. If you have a big battle, you cannot shout little because it's unfair exchange. See, if you're going through a great challenge, anybody going through challenges? The rest of y'all are lying. Anybody going through challenges? Put your hand up if you're going through challenges. Okay, when you know what the word says about your challenge and you meditate on that word and then you begin to sound like you would sound had God already delivered you from the challenge, then that is fair exchange of praise and that activates heaven in your regard to cause your victory to occur in the natural realm. That's the law. And when you read about Jericho, we started this morning, I won't go into it. But first of all, there was a sound that announced God. When you play, brother, you play with a revelation 
that I'm not just a backup musician. I'm playing with a revelation that God is in me, coming out of my fingers, into the air, and deliverance comes, healing comes, miracles come. It's wrong if you go to church and you're unchanged when you walk out the door. You didn't encounter God. That doesn't mean God wasn't here. It just means your receiver wasn't turned on to a place where you could receive from him. And Father, we just believe right now that you're gonna do great things. Amen, this congregation. And we give you the praise for it. In the name of Jesus. I'm excited about what I know God is doing. For these are the days of great glory on the earth. This is the day when men's heart will fail them. But those that have been tuned in to the victorious sound of heaven will begin to see miracles in their life like they've never seen. They'll begin to experience God's presence like they've never seen. They'll begin to do miracles like the world has never seen. If you're a believer, you're a miracle worker. If you're a believer, you have in your hands the ability to heal, the ability to deliver, the ability to see God do great things. Don't wait for someone to come to church and do it for you. You begin to be that. Because the essence of what God's called us to do is to be lights in our world. Hallelujah. And I know Darlene's going to minister, and I want her to just get up here and go. But I'll do a couple of songs. And I have no, I really have no, I have no agenda, which makes me, it's very scary sometimes when you have no idea. And God will begin to deal with me about a song, and I go, in, I'm having a conversation with God because I don't even remember the key of that song. I don't even remember how that song goes exactly. But he doesn't seem to care. Have you ever had God do, have you do something that you had no earthly idea what you were doing? I said, have you ever had God do something like that? I mean, tell you to do this and it looked absolutely absurd. Anybody ever been there? Have you been there? Well, Zion is uh, a type of the high praises of God. And I believe that in, in the earth, there's a mandate from heaven to call every believer, every blood-bought person to come up into a higher level to begin to be victorious in every arena of their life. And if you're not, tonight is the beginning of a new season in your life because God has already paid the price for your total victory, for your deliverance, for every need you've ever had or ever will have. And so we give you praise, Lord. Lord, we magnify your name. You are coming to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all. Zion is calling a higher place of praise. Ooh, I'm gonna stand upon the mountain until the nations can magnify his name. Ooh, and tell all of the people, tell the nations that. Calling me to a higher 
Praise God, somebody. Have you enjoyed this? Hallelujah. Well, the best is yet to come. I believe it because somebody's life has already been changed. And when you leave this place, you're going to know that you've been touched by the hand of God. You know, I preached this a couple weeks ago at Solid Rock Church. And let me just say... Uh, before I get started, how blessed I am that I have so many wonderful friends here. Lee and Sharon have just been like my family, and Darren and Brooke and the kids and all the rest of the family. And then to see friends that have been mine for 40 years, Dwight and Zonell and their precious children and Chris and her granddaughter, I am so blessed. You know, I think some of the greatest gifts that God can give you is friends. And I'm just so blessed. I have been so blessed with so many wonderful friends. And then I met a friend. It's been about a couple of years ago. And uh, I thought, this guy's really cool. And so I'm so blessed to be Phil Driscoll's wife help me and I'm going to help him he needs a lot of help <laughs> hallelujah but I'm just going to bounce off of what he started this morning was that not wonderful this morning I'm telling you it just I have he has taught me so much in just a short time about praise and how important it is. But I'm going to bring you just a few things and show you how that you were created. Because, you know, people, uh, they want to find themselves. You know, they're out there trying to, you know, find who they are. And, you know, we got this ancestry or whatever, you know, going back your ancestors. I don't want to go back to my ancestors because I come from a long line of killers. And, you know, people's in prison and, you know, all this bad stuff, the mafia and all of it. So I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. And so I'm just, uh, I'm just so excited about what God is doing in the earth. But when you realize why you were created, what are you doing here anyway? I mean, what is man, and why did God create us for this earth? Well, he gave us the answer in Isaiah 43 and 21, and God said this. He said, this people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. In the original, I love this. In the original, it says, through the squeezing into shape to mold into a form as a potter to determine fashion for the purpose. See, if you don't know why something is created, you will abuse it. The other day I was looking for a screwdriver and I couldn't find one, so I went in my uh, silverware drawer and I got out a knife and I tried to use it as a screwdriver and I bent my knife so I couldn't use my knife anymore because I wasn't using it for what it was created to do. 
See, the word, when he said to show forth my praise, the word show means to celebrate. It means to speak and to tell. Psalms 150 tells us why we praise him. He said, as uh, Phil said, for his mighty acts according to his excellent greatness. And the first thing the word of God says, praise him on the trumpet, on the psaltery, the harp, the timbrel, the dance, the stringed instruments, the organs, the loud sounding cymbals. And then he says, let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. So tonight, I'm going to go through a few things, and I'm going to show you how that your body was created to praise the Lord. The things that God has... See, the first thing is, God is a spirit, and he must be worshipped in the spirit. See, although angels are praising around the throne of God, when Isaiah saw them, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, and then 700 years later on the Isle of Patmos, John saw these angels around the throne of God. See, his desire is that a people that he created would worship him out of love and adoration. The scripture tells us of several ways that we can praise the Lord. See, you wonder why you got hands. You wonder why you got feet when a snake don't have any any of that while there's different animals that have you know different uh, 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 arms and hands and and horses that have legs and and hooves and all these things you wonder why God created let me show you the first thing let's look at is our mouth the reason I mean you open your mouth approximately 700 times a day now I know some people that open them a lot more than 700 times And they usually call me when I'm in my prayer time. But he said in Proverbs, he said, Open my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. In the book of Psalms, he said, let my mouth be filled with thy praise. David said, three times a day, I'm going to praise the Lord. And then he changed it, and he said, seven times a day, I'm going to praise the Lord. And then he said, I will continually praise the Lord. See, the more you praise, the more that it becomes a part of your life. My little grandson asked me the other day, he said, Mom, why do you pray all the time? And I said, Honey, because everything that I see, that reminds me of the greatness of God it just makes a praise come out of my mouth I said like when I see a beautiful flower I know that God created that flower for us to look at and admire and so I begin to teach my grandson why it was so important to praise the Lord well you know the woman at the well when Jesus met her there uh, she wanted to know uh, where that they should worship but it's not about where we worship it's Uh, you know it's why we worship and how that we worship and Phil gave us some great uh, examples this morning but what is in the spirit you must have the Holy Spirit in order to worship a holy God you just can't go out in all of your carnality and you know and just think God is going to honor your praise he said you must be praised in the spirit I asked God this has been several years ago because you know we used to sing those old old songs that made us feel good. I mean, there was no worship in the songs. I was raised Pentecostal, and we used to sing those old songs like dark clouds hovering all around me, pray that I'll be able to stand, you know, just crazy stuff, you know, and down here the burden's heavy, and sometimes it's hard to climb, but, you know, but uh, one day I won't have to worry anymore. We would sing those songs out of ignorance, but when worship began to to come, and this generation generation that that's so many beautiful worship songs and we had some of my my dad was one of them and he said darling I hate all those old off the wall songs because we started showing them on the wall you know so you could know the words to them but when you think about how that uh, that God wanted to connect us and and when he told us to begin to worship him and praise him The thing about worship is when you think about how that God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting a word from the Lord right now as I'm trying to speak because, you know, I asked the Lord, why do you need worship? 
And the Lord spoke to me and asked me a question. He said, why do you need air? And I said, I need it to live. He said, there is where I live. I live in praise. You know, I saw this rock and it said, don't make me cry out. I tell you, the reason that God created me was to worship him, to praise him, to honor him. And that's the reason he gave me this mouth. It's not just to talk on our cell phone 3,000 minutes a a month. He gave me this mouth that I could praise him hallelujah give the Lord a clap praise see praise and worship isn't just something you do at church 30 minutes before the preacher gets up the Bible says you know that it talked about singing he said serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing it, like Phil said it doesn't matter if you can hit a, a note if you sing country or if you sing you know rock whatever you sing if it's dedicated unto the Lord see some of you have an attitude and you need it adjusted and that's the reason some of you are you know your spirit's in critical condition because he said though this outer man perish the inward man is renewed day by day you know how we renew this inner man is by reminding him every day of what God has brought us through anytime I wake up in the morning I say thank you Jesus because I knew that I can remember many times and Zonel remembers this how that many times I would get up in the morning and and blood would be all over my gown and I wake up now and, and many times when I would take my bra off it would be filled with blood so every time that I take my bra off even to this day I say thank you Jesus because see you're praising him for what he's already done but we're also praising him for what he's going to do I'm thanking him that I've got health that I've got strength I don't wait till I have to go to the doctor to praise him for my health I do it every day every time I run up my stairs I'm saying thank you Jesus that I'm 73 years old I can still run I can. St- I don't take a pill I don't have to doctor's appointment and that's worth praising the Lord hallelujah see some people it amazes me how that some people come to church and they're so down and they're so out and you know uh, you don't go to a party whining and complaining you don't go to somebody's a birthday party and go in and say, well, I've had a bad day, honey. The devil's been about to. But yet you come to church and all you want to do is get some with someone that you can have a pity party with. You come into God's house to celebrate, to celebrate his goodness, his mercy, and his love. Hallelujah. You know, people say, well, I just, you know, I just... Sister Darlene, here she comes prancing in, the choir singing the same old song. It isn't the church is, is changed, it's you have changed. Because when Lawrence's grandmother, uh, my son's grandmother, when, when she would, uh, when we would sing happy birthday, we used to do this years ago, she'd be over in the corner just to happy birthday. She never had a bad day. Never, I couldn't ask her how to do the service tonight because she never, she said, honey, I've never been to a bad church service. But that's the reason that we were created. Look at somebody and say three ways to use your mouth. You can praise him singing. You can praise him with a praise and you can praise him with a shout. See, most of the Psalms are prayers. And, but most of them include praise. Praise expresses my adoration and my appreciation for the Lord. You know, so when you think about the attitude that you come into church with is going to affect somebody. I love to be around people that are up. I, I detest being, and I refuse to be around somebody that you never know what mood they're going to be in. I wake up happy every day. I wake up, I go to bed happy every day because I know in whom I serve and I have nothing to look down about because I know that I was created, I was formed, I was squeezed out to show somebody how to praise and when to praise God. So when you pray, when do you praise God? All the time. Even when I'm driving down the, the other day I was, I was, I had a, 
somebody's CD, I don't even remember who it was, but they were singing that song, Hallelujah Anyhow. And I was going about 80 some. <laughs> and I got pulled over. And it took them a long time to pull me over because I like my music loud. <laughs> and so it was a highway patrol. And when she come walking up to the, to the car, I was thinking, oh, God, oh, devil, I rebuke you. <laughs> but I was thinking, oh, God, help me, Lord. What should I do? What should I say? And so when she said, could I have your license, please? And I handed her my driver's license. And I said, excuse me. I said, uh, I don't ever make excuses. And I know I was probably going way too fast. I said, but I was listening to this song. And I said, it was talking about praising God. And I said, I was just lost in my praise. I said, can I ask you to do something? I said, can, I want you to listen to the song that I was listening to. Because it was going about 90 miles an hour, that song was. So I said, can you put your ear just in my car just a little bit and I'll show you the song that I was listening to while I was praising the Lord and she put her ear in there and she began to grin she said I'm a member of your church I said thank you Jesus hallelujah see he's worth <laughs> yeah it was 80 something I don't know exactly but anyway but he said singing and making melody in your heart see when, when you sing something that's giving a praise unto God, lift up holy, who's going to go to that holy mountain? Those that have clean hands and a pure heart. And when you know that there's no sin in your life and you get down, you don't have to go through all confession and all. All you got to do is lift up your holy hands unto the Lord and you're automatically at his holy mountain. The next thing that we can do is shout unto God. An acclamation of joy, a battle cry, a war hoop. Just like in karate, when they don't go to hit that thing and go, well, I think I might not make it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. No, you know what they do? They make a battle cry. Have you noticed, just like Phil had said, people don't care how excited you get at a ball game or any of these other things, but be quiet in church, you know, be reverent to God. But David said, let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them shout for joy. And then he said, shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. How, how long has it been since you shouted? You know, us Pentecostals, we used to thought, think that was when you danced. But how long has it been since you shouted unto God with a voice of triumph? That means I've already won the battle. I don't care what I go through. I always praise him in advance. That's what gets God to moving. Isaiah said, cry out and shout thou Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel. What are you excited about, Darlene? I'm excited about that when I was 14 years old, when my family was so poor that we didn't have two nickels to rub together, we I had to go and sit in the in the girls' restroom in a stall while they had lunch because I didn't have a quarter to buy my lunch. I know and think what God has brought me to. Look what the Lord has done. I mean, made me an heir to everything that Jesus has. And you think I'm going to sit by and not praise a God that took a little poor girl, 14 years old, and set me on high, call me to preach, give me the desires of my heart, and I'm not going to praise him. I'm going to shout unto God. Do we have any shouters in the house hallelujah do we have to come on I want you to sing Phil has got a song and it's called talked about shout and I want you to get your shout on I want you to praise him what are you excited about tonight you were on your way to hell I mean you should have been in hell but God rescued you just in time hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. No, y'all got to be louder. You got to be louder. Just begin to think about the biggest battle you got right now. 
Begin to think about it right now and then begin to see God in the middle of your battle. I said see it right now and begin to sound like he's in your battle right now. Begin to sound like he's winning for you right now. Begin to see it by the eye of faith. Begin to see him moving in your battle. Begin to see heaven's artillery beginning to move in your battle. Whether whatever it is, begin to see God moving in your battle. See him moving in your battle. You can't be silent and see God perform for you. You got to shout. You got to lift up your voice. You got to make loud sounds, as loud of a sound as you would make if you saw it with your natural eye right now. Lift up your voice because that's what's happening. That's what's happening in the spirit. That's what's happening in the real, real world. That's not, that's not some kind of a, that's not some kind of a make-believe thing. When you shout, you activate heaven's artillery in your life. Your shout brings heaven to bear into your natural order of battle. So when you lift up your voice, that's why if the devil can steal your shout, he can win in every battle of your life. If he can steal your sound of victory, he has the right to win because the accompanying sound of defeat is always a silent. The louder the sound you make in God's honor, the greater he begins to perform for you. If you see a great performance, you don't make a little sound. You make a sound that's equal to the performance you see being done in your eyes. So begin to see through your eye of faith God moving in your battle, not somebody else's battle, your battle. Begin to see God turning things around that looks impossible in the natural order of things. Begin to see him doing it right now. Begin to see him doing it right now. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. I said hallelujah. I, can't, I still can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. All right. Lord, we magnify your name. We lift up our voice. We declare the victory is here in our life. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. We say victory is ours. And we lift up our voice. And we rejoice before you. We are in high spirits because victory is ours. And we lift up our voice and we declare God is on our battle. He's on our scene. Hallelujah. Well, we lift up above never be just to magnify his name. We lift up above never be When you lift up your voice, when you lift up your voice to sing, and it finds it kind of a drag when you make the music right. And when you lift your voice in a simple song of praise, all oh, that I've ever stand at the mention of his name. So shout out to God for the voice of praise. Shout out to him, shout. Shout out to God for the voice of praise. Make some heaven and earth. Every time you lift him up, you bring the darkness.
shout we're not in a dead church Lord have mercy if you're in a dead church you better get out before you're dead hallelujah see God is going up with a shout and the Bible said that he's coming back with a shout so you better learn to get your shout on hallelujah the Bible said that all Israel shouted with a great shout because of the foundation of the house of the Lord that was laid. Listen to this. But the father who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation was laid wept with a loud voice. And many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the weeping from the shouting for the people shouted with a loud voice. I want to tell you, if you want to overcome the enemy, start shouting with a loud shout. Oh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Shouts of joy always prevail. See, shout is not saying anything. If you're nervous or anxious or frustrated or fearful, what you need to do is to release some Holy Ghost enzymes and just start praising God. Some of you went to church for years. You probably wasn't allowed to raise your hand. If you'd raised your hand, that thought you had a question. But another thing that God has given us in order that he shaped us and he formed us to show forth his praise is our hands. 
See, your hands were made for clapping. He said, clap your hands, all ye people. Can anybody clap your hands? Not just patty cake, but... You know, they said when Obama was nominated for, for uh, or was, uh, you know, became president of the United States, that he had the longest standing ovation that was made in history. I forget how many minutes that they stood and they clapped for a man. And we come to church and want a patty cake. I want to tell you, it's time that we clap our hands under the Lord. He said, wave your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Can you do your hands? Can somebody clap your hands? Wave your hands. Hallelujah. Another thing that God has given us is legs to stand on. And you wonder why we stand for praise and worship instead of sitting. Because in David's tabernacle, the instructions for his tabernacle was, Bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. So we stand to honor him. I mean, when a judge comes into a courtroom, I mean, he might be as crooked as a barrel of snakes, as my daddy used to say. But when he walks in that room, everybody must stand. You might say, well, I'm not standing for him. They'll put you out, honey. And people say, well, I won't, you know, I won't bow my knee. And, and could he give us uh, that we could bow before the Lord. Well, you know, some people say they'll never bow. Well, I'll tell you, God heard you say that. He said, every knee shall bow. In every tongue. Can you imagine how that some people, what, with the money that some people would give if they could just had your legs to stand on? Praise God. People say, you know, but God, and I, I remember this story, and I, maybe Dwight told me this. I think, I think probably you did, Dwight, but I thought it was such a good story about an atheist that told an old, old southern preacher. He said, you know, he said, I'm sick of y'all having y'all's day. You know, Thanksgiving, so you thank God for your food. And then you have Christmas, and you're celebrating, you know, the birth of, of what you call the Christ. And, and he said, and then you celebrate Easter. They give you Easter. That's your day for, you know, the resurrection of what you call Jesus. Jesus. And he said, I think it's time that we that are atheists have our day. And the old country preacher said, well, you got your day. You just don't recognize it. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, it's April Fool's Day. Don't you know you got your day to celebrate? But see, worship is not asking for anything. Just loving the Lord, the hope of the world. Sometimes his presence gets so close that just bowing or just standing before the Lord is not enough. So many times when I'm praying in the mornings and doing my worship with the Lord, I just get down on my face before God. Because he said for us to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And when we offer ourselves to him, it's, no, it's, it's nothing extraordinary that you're giving yourself and it's no big thing, but he created you for this purpose, to show forth, to tell somebody, to be an example in front of somebody. See, there's another thing that I want Phil to do this because I got revelation out of this when we talk about dancing before the Lord. You know, the devil stole the dance from the church. Did you know that? I mean, the dance was made for God's people. In Psalms 149 and 150, it said, let them praise his name in a dance. And Jeremiah said, turn your mourning into dancing. Miriam led the children of Israel in a dance of victory. It's mentioned more times about dancing before the Lord than it is bowing or standing but see what people do, you know, they'll clap their hands and, you know, and they'll raise their hands. But when it comes to dancing, you know, they draw back and they think, no, I'm not going to do that. But when you talk about dancing, let me tell you what, the, uh, 57 times it uses the word dance in the Hebrew. And what it means is beating with your feet means to burn your enemy into ashes. So when you, when you are beating your feet, and I mean even if you can't dance, if you're just beating your feet, what you're doing, you are burning your enemy into ashes. He said, thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. Some of y'all coming here with your, with your smile upside down, what you need to do is get your dance on. And see the good thing about the dancing in the church, you don't need a partner. 
Because if I had a partner, they probably couldn't last as long as I do. But see, God is so cool. I'm so glad that he used a king to show us how to dance. Come here, Phil. Hallelujah. Don't you all like how he, he's obedient? <laughs> but David had waited 20 years for the Ark of the Covenant to come back into Jerusalem. And he wanted to dance. He danced every seven feet. Come on. No, 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 no. no. Tell it. I don't know it. <laughs> don't you love her? Oh, yes. You know, don't you wish that there would be more believers that were as ridiculously reckless as she is? Y'all are really too quiet. Don't you wish there were more believers that had a little bit of fire on the inside of them? There are no losers dancers. When it gets right down to it, when God gave Adam dominion over the earth, right? the dominion principle says that in this place, you have the right, Darren, to make any kind of sound you want to make. It's the dominion law. When you clap your hands, there's energy that is released into the air and wherever that clap is heard, you have just established atmospheric control. When you shout, ha! You cause the air around where your shout is heard to be penetrated. It really causes a disturbance in the atmosphere. Satan is ruler of the atmosphere. He's prince of the power of the air. That is his designated right. When you shout unto God, you throw a grenade into his atmosphere of darkness bursting with light. That's a law. When you dance, you begin to disturb the atmosphere, but you send a signal in the atmosphere of victory because there is no dancing without joy. There is no dancing without a cause of victory. That's why dances occur. And when the word says dance before the Lord, when you, when you study David, David, when he finally got it right in terms of, you remember when he, when he first took the Ark of the Covenant, one of his men decided he would help God steady the place where he lived, God don't need your help. And he died right there. And David freaked out, and the ark went over into the house of Obadiah, however you say that name, you know the guy. You know the guy. And David went back to Jerusalem, but he began to hear how this guy was blessed in everything that happened. I mean, he was getting more prosperous, he was winning, he was blessed, right? Isn't there a lesson in there? If God gets around your scene, you're gonna be blessed. God is not gonna get on your scene with you being silent all the time and, and just succumbing to whatever the devil has planned for you, right? So watch what happens. David says, I'm gonna go get the ark, right? So he said, I'm gonna do it right this time. I'm taking no chances. Every so many feet the ark moved, they'd have a celebration. Not just a little celebration. They would dance, they would blow the trumpets, they would just have a party. Why? Because they discovered that God liked it and they also discovered that wherever they danced, they were preparing the way for God to move because Oh, I hope you get this. As they danced, they would dance in front of the ark and then the ark would move where they had danced. There's a signal there. If you want God to move in your battle, make sounds, make a celebration, celebrate who he is, make some loud sounds and honor him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him in the same way he's great 
So God, God, the tabernacle moved all the way into Jerusalem. Now you remember what happened. The Bible says that David danced before the Lord, before all of Israel. He's now in Jerusalem, and he begins to dance. But he dances like a wild man. He dances like a wild man. In a linen ephod, that was the signal of a priestly garment. David began to dance before the Lord, and you remember the story. Michael, Saul's daughter, disdained him because her perception was that he made a fool out of her position of royalty. And so when David came up to the castle, she said, how glorious was the king today. She mocked him. And he said, oh, I was, and I'll be more radical than that for my God. And the Bible recounts this that from that day she was barren. She never had a child. God shut her down. But at the same time, David is the only king who ever fed the entire nation. Jesus fed 5,000 here, several thousand there. David fed the entire nation with a glass of wine, bread, and meat. And he did it right after he had danced. And what Darling wanted me to minister about was in, in the time of David, David was not allowed to build the temple because of the blood that was on his hands. That's what God said. Because he was a warring king. When David would win a battle in the custom of the day, the armies that he had fought and won against that were still alive were made to disrobe and dance down the street in front of the king, David. And it sent a signal to the entire nation of Israel. We are dancing before one greater than I. So when David took off his royalty and began to dance like a wild man in the streets of Jerusalem, where the common men could see him and the common women could see him, he sent a signal to the entire nation You've seen men dance before me because I was greater. Now I dance before my God who is greater than me. And when the, when the nation saw that, that sent the, the greatest signal to the entire nation. Because David, the Bible says, was a man after God's own heart. And I hear many reasons why they, theologians will think that, that he was. But I believe it was this reason. He did not consider his position to be radical about his God. He never stopped being radical about his God. And he was vehement about it. He, would, he set aside all of royalty and all of his position to declare how great his God was. Yes. And I believe that when we as believers, when we begin to do that, we will see the same results that David saw. Yes. And I'm telling you, if, if you have any sense of, of urgency in the world, this is the day that believers like you and me must begin to walk in a greater level of victory than we have ever walked in our life. If we serve a God that raised Jesus from the dead who said the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, then we must begin to not only act like it, but we must begin to demonstrate the greatness of our God. The world is hurting. The world is in trouble. And it's not religion that's going to save the world. It is, it is miracle power from the hands of believers that lay hands on the sick, that watch God do miracles. This is not the day to rest on your laurels. It's not the day to rest on what you've done before. I cannot rest on how many notes I played right yesterday because every day is a new day. But I know this, this is the time in the season when God wants to see the victorious sound of the earth because we are a chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people that we should show forth. That means to demonstrate, show forth the praises of God. And when we do that, it causes heaven 
to begin. See, there's a sound. There's a sound that's in heaven. There's a sound that's in heaven that is born in you when you become born again. When that sound comes out of a man or a woman in praise, in worship, when that sound comes out, there's a corresponding sound in heaven that begins to be heard in the earth. I believe that angels sing along with you when you shout. I believe that heaven begins to sound exactly like you sound because that's what God intended. God intends for our victory. God intends for us to walk in the high places, not the low places. And it's time to set aside all the religious tradition that would limit us, that would stop us, that would slow us down. I remember for years, I've, 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 we've operated in our ministry, I think 17 airplanes. But I never really got the, I never got the picture. I thought that I was just destined to fly at 12,000, 15,000 feet and I was, I was content until I one day got in a plane that went higher. And then one day I got in a plane and I looked down at thunderstorms and hail being poured out of a thunderstorm. And I increased my vision. Don't be satisfied with how ever high you are living in your life because there's a higher way. There's a higher dimension. And when you and I began to get in contact with that. See, there's nothing so wonderful as winning a great victory when it's been a horrific battle. I'm telling you, victory is sweeter when there's been a fight. And it's a time for God's people to not be pacifists about the battles that we encounter in life, but to be vocal and to demonstrate God's power and not be afraid to shout, not be afraid to sing the high praises of God. I stop with this. You remember where the verse says, arise, shine, for your light has come? You know that song, right? You know that. How many of y'all know that one, right? Well, I read a trans couple of translations that just rocked my boat. It said, the first one was the literal translation said, cancel your plans to be miserable. The second translation said, arise from the prostration and fear in which circumstances have kept you. Arise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of God because the, glory, the light has shone upon you. And the other one is break covenant with death and darkness. And see, when you begin to shout, when you begin to clap your hands unto God with the bullets of his word when you shout. See, when you shout, just to shout doesn't mean a hill of beans. But to shout because you know what his word says about your battle and because you're shouting because you take a hold of it and you believe it, then the whole paradigm changes and heaven begins to perform commensurate to the sound. See, that's why when it says praise him according to his excellent greatness, you cannot but praise him loud. You cannot but give your energy to him because when you give your energy to him, it releases his energy and power to you. Can you, you know when you shouted a minute ago, when you heard that shout, there's electricity in the air, my brother and sister, and it comes because not only is the sound of a shout heard, but the sound of heaven's, heaven's interaction with the sound. God charges the air with his energy and power when you lift up your voice in praise to him. If you don't remember anything else about tonight, remember what Darlene shared with you. You were created, you were formed by the master himself to show forth praise, to demonstrate his greatness in your world. You may be the only sound of victory your friends may ever hear. You may be the only sound of, of, a, of a shout that they'll ever hear and they won't understand it, but then they'll see God moving in your life and they'll get it. Hallelujah, darling. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, honey. See, nothing honors God more than your praise in times of adversity. I remember when my breast was bleeding, like I said a while ago, and I was washing the blood out of my gown one morning and I told the Lord, I said, if this breast rots and falls off into this water, as long as there's a breath in my body, I'm gonna preach that you're Jehovah Rapha, you're my healer. I wanna tell you right at that moment, he spoke to me. I believe that my steadfastness, taking hold of God and not letting go, brought glory to God. And for over 30 years, I've been proclaiming that he's still the healer. So God has made me a worshiper 
and a praiser. That's what I love to do. I love to worship and I love to praise Him. You know, you think about how many battles that you have fought, how many devils that you've jumped over, the temptation that you've run from, and then the devil wants to make you think that people are criticizing you or looking at you because of the way that you worship God. I believe we ought to be fanatic in worshiping God. I remember there was a man, and I know Dwight and Zonell have seen him at our church many times. His name was Brother Peter. And as soon as the music would start, Brother Peter would start spinning. And as he would spin, you know, it was a little distracting, I could say, because people come to us, and there was a man that went to our church, was probably one of the best tie givers that we had. And he said, Brother Lawrence, I think that you ought to sit him down, said he's a distraction to the church. When he starts spinning like that, said you're taking focus off of the church and off of the worship and onto him. And Lawrence said to him, he said, let me tell you about Brother Peter. Brother Peter was the biggest dope dealer in our county. He's got seven prison numbers. Brother Peter was shot and zipped up in a body bag. And today, Brother Peter gave his heart to the Lord a few years ago, and now he has his own business. He's prospering like he never thought that he would, living in a big, fine home when he was homeless. He said, so I don't think that it would be wisdom to me to try to sit him down because I know what he's been through. Some of y'all have been to hell and back, but I wanna tell you something Satan can't steal from you, and that's your praise. He might take your car, the Stats Mac man might get your house, but he can't take your praise because that's something that God created us for, is to show forth his praise. Stand with me. So I don't praise God because of where he brought me from. I'm praising God where he's taking me to. And I'm thanking God every day that he give me a mouth to praise him, give me hands to clap, knees to bow, give me a voice to shout, a voice to sing his praises. So let me ask you a question. Are you living up to you what you were created for? Have you praised him today? Are you ashamed to praise him when you bow your head in a restaurant and pray? A lot of times when I pray, if the server is there, I always ask them, is there anything that you would like for us to pray for as we pray over our food? You would be surprised at the things that those servers will tell you what they need every opportunity that you have to lift up the name of Jesus take that opportunity because you don't know when it's going to be the last time bow your head with me Father we come to you today thanking you that you chose us you formed us you created us and you chose us because you knew that we wouldn't be ashamed to proclaim your name, to tell somebody, to demonstrate how excited we are that we're on our way to glory. Lord, if there's one under the sound of my voice that has lost their praise, Lord, I'm believing tonight that people are gonna be renewed in their spirit They're going to go home with a shout and a praise, singing and glorifying your name. Lord, I thank you. Lord, that this word will bring revelation to us. And when we wake up in the morning, it's not going to be blue Monday. It's going to be sunshine all the day long. So, Lord, I pray right now that you touch Heal, deliver, repair, restore every heart and every life that's in here. 
God, that they'll never be the same. The revelation that we've received, Lord, that's been inspired by the Holy Ghost, will become illumination that we will begin to understand what we're doing here on this earth in 2018. And that's to praise you. As ever head is bowed, I just want to ask you the question. Is there anything between you and your God that would keep you from praising Him? If there is, tonight would be a good night to be restored, to get your shout back, to get your praise back. In the name of Jesus. If I'm talking to you, just lift up your hand and wave it at me because we're not ashamed. Thank God for these hands that are going up. Is there anybody else? You say, darling, I've become dull in my praise. I've, I've not been praising him like I should. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else, just lift your hand and wave it at me. God bless you. Anybody else? I want you to turn around. I want you to ask three or four people, do you still have your praise? Come on, turn around. I want you to ask them right now. Do you still have your praise? And if they say no, just say, come on, let's get it back. Because we're going to stand here and we're going to declare to hell that he is going to give back what he has stolen because he's a thief and he can steal your praise. But your days of being defeated is over. I said your days of being defeated is over because Satan knows how to put depression on you. He knows how to defeat you, but he don't know what to do when you're praising him in the midst of everything that the devil has thrown at you. You that lifted your hand, I want you to come and stand right here. We're gonna pray with you and we're gonna get your praise back. Hallelujah, thank you. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Clap your hands. Come on, those hands were made to clap. Shout unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, you could do better than that. The Bible said heaven is rejoicing. When one comes to repentance, all of heaven rejoices with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Dwight, come up here and pray with these people. Thank you, Jesus. Restore unto them. David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Somewhere he had lost his joy, but he said, restore unto me. I want you to lift everyone here. I want you to lift up your hands and pray this prayer with Dwight. Every hand lifted. Hands lifted is the universal surrender around the world. It means I give up every word, every phrase. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, my hands are lifted. My heart is open. And I ask you, come in. Take everything, anything that's in my life that's not pleasing to you. Remove it. In the name of Jesus, from this moment on, I am free in Jesus' name because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, I clap my hands and thank you that tonight I'm free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many received this word? Is it just on time? Right on time? Amen. You can be seated. God bless you. Before we leave this place, I do believe it's fitting. Sister Darlene, as you was ministering and Brother Phil came up, I saw, uh, I felt in my spirit that we're going to sow a seed into you too, but I want you both to come up and stand right here. I know this is a little different, but we're going to do it because I feel like this is what the Lord told me to do. Brother Dwight and Pastor Leah want you to come. I want to grab this oil, and we're going to pray for this ministry. 
and y'all stand right here, you think, well, they don't need no prayer. You are wrong. You think the devil was mad at them uh, separated. He's really mad that they're together. And I, I believe we need to cover them in prayer. And as you pray for them, and we bind together, we're just going to anoint. They're already anointed, but we're going to plead the blood of Jesus over them and anoint them right now as a corporate body. And we want to plead and, pr and speak the word of blessing over their life. And then we're going to sow a seed into them. Can you, can you, how many can come in agreement that God can bless and meet the needs that they have? Not just for today. I'm talking about for the future. And what God's going to use them and take them as a, as a husband and as a wife. Let's pray together. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on these vessels of honor. <laughs> Lord, we anoint them before you as a corporate body, and we declare the blood of Jesus protection over them. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing, an anointing that lifts burdens and destroys yokes. Devil, you're a liar, and where you have, you would like to cause confusion and distraction, we speak victory in all areas. Every step that they take together, hand by hand, we declare right now demons in hell will tremble because of the Jesus that they carry. Thank you, Lord, that they have favor. They have favor from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Every place they go, the God, the doors are going to open. They're going to go places that they've never been. They've been a lot of places, but thank you, God, you're taking them places they've never been before. We speak life in Jesus' name. Open up the windows of heaven. Blow their mind with where you're about to take them. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone in agreement say amen, amen and amen. Honor this man and woman of God. Come on, let them know you love them. We love y'all. Hallelujah. Here's the privilege and honor you have. I want to sow into their life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a check tonight. and I'm gonna, It's going to be a sacrificial check. I want you to have an opportunity to sow into their life. If you sow it in good ground, you will reap a harvest. I promise you. Don't put it in your, in your burger. Don't put it in your belly. Sow your seed and let God bring a harvest for your life. This is what God's taught me a long time ago.